good mood and for this event you'll run smoothly i would like to say welcome to our visiting lecturer today dr kisento sidas atnani from health university malaysia with the topic entrepreneurship your ticket to become your own boss and i hope this visiting lecture will give model beneficial and significant implication in our education, especially in the development of student quality as a friendship between university partner. And I will share about schedule today. First, we will listen to presentation from Dr. Kisan and continue with Q&A session and illustration in Easter closing. Yeah, in editation, I would like to express my gratitude and thanks to Dr. Kisen Tulsidas Atnani for participating in our visiting lecture program. Yeah, for Dr. Kisen, you can open this class today. Thank you. Okay, hi. Uh, I'm just uh, trying to share my uh, file here and... Uh, I only have Dropbox, Microsoft Online, where right? is a uh, computer. Just give me a second, please. May I know I need problem, Chair? Yeah, I because uh, uh, I'm so used to Teams, Microsoft Teams. So that's why. Uh... Huh? Pardon? Ah, here it is. Okay. All right. All right, can you see my screen? Yes, this is invisible. Yeah, uh, should I put it in a slideshow? Yeah, go ahead. All right, can you see my screen, guys? Hi, guys, can you see my screen? Yes, is it invisible, sir? Oh, okay, all right, okay. So, uh, very good afternoon. A uh, very good afternoon. Sorry for that little technical glitch there uh, just now. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very familiar with Microsoft Teams, but, uh, but Microsoft Zoom is uh, something, I mean, sorry, not Microsoft. Uh, Zoom is also something that we've been using all, uh, for some time, uh, but uh, more of a Microsoft Team guy. So a uh, very good afternoon. I just like to know how many participants are there? Are they already in? Uh, for you know, the meeting, it's uh, 12 and also some audience who are watching in a live YouTube also. Okay, so the, the audience are in? Yeah. Okay, all right then, thank you. All right, so my, my talk for today, uh, I, I hope to make it as uh, interactive as possible. So if there are any questions, please do, uh, uh, please do raise your hand or please use the chat box. And uh, I will try to address uh, any of your questions or any of your doubts uh, that you may have. Okay, so I'm Kishan, I'm from Health University. I've been with Health for the last, uh, since 2004, almost 18 years, been with help for almost 18 years. And, um, and as far as entrepreneurship is concerned, I've been teaching this subject since 2010. So roughly about 12 years since, uh, since I started teaching this. Okay, so I, I chose this topic, uh, your ticket to become your own boss, uh, simply because entrepreneurship, that's what entrepreneurship is all about. Okay, entrepreneurship simply means that you can, uh, you you will be guided, all right? Uh, if you're taking the course, of course, right? there's, there's of course entrepreneurship as a course, and there's of course entrepreneurship as your career, okay? So of course, if you are going for this course, we assume and we hope uh, you can be, you, you too will become an entrepreneur. If you do not become an entrepreneur, then you might become an intrapreneur, okay? Intrapreneur means you are an internal entrepreneur. So you make decisions, you run the business like your own, 
company. Okay, so that's what uh, entrepreneurship is all about. So let me just uh, move on. Okay, uh, just, just a show of hand. How many of you think that a businessman is also an entrepreneur? How many of you guys think that a businessman is also an entrepreneur? Anybody wants to try? Is a businessman an entrepreneur? Any guesses? Is a businessman an entrepreneur? Is an entrepreneur a businessman? Okay, I see something on the chat here. Uh, they are, uh, Novita says is a businessman. Yes, you mean, you mean to say that an entrepreneur is a businessman too? Are all entrepreneurs businessmen? What comes to your mind when we, when we talk about an entrepreneur? Businessmen just sell. And what does the entrepreneur do? He doesn't sell. Find a solution. Okay, a businessman also may find a solution. Anyone wants to try? Do you think all businessmen are entrepreneurs? Or do you think all entrepreneurs are businessmen? What do you think? Are all entrepreneurs... Or oh, let me put it very simply, is a businessman an entrepreneur? Entrepreneur have a good management. Businessmen also have a good management. <laughs> uh, Iman says, an entrepreneur is an individual who creates a new business bearing most of the risk. Oh, you're getting closer. Yeah, okay, Iman, you're getting closer. Okay. Now, imagine, imagine there's a guy running a mini market in your, in your uh, residential area, let's say the, the residential area that you are staying, okay? There's a guy that's running a mini market and he's doing extremely well. His business is doing extremely well, okay? And then you decide to take the lot next to him. You decide to take the lot next to him and you decide to open a similar mini market with a similar concept, okay? Does that make you an entrepreneur or a businessman? You decide to open a mini market next to this guy who's doing very well. Does that make you an entrepreneur or does that make you a businessman? Anybody wants to try? Going once? Going twice? Surrender? Surrender? <laughs> okay. If you are going to do the same thing like what others are doing, I repeat, if you are going to do the same thing like what others are doing, there is no novelty. Novelty means there's nothing new in your business. You are a businessman, but you are definitely, you don't definite, definitely, you don't qualify to be called an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur means you have to do something different. You have to bring about something new. There must be some level of newness in what you are doing. If you are just going to copy somebody's business and do the same thing like what others are doing, you are a businessman. And there's nothing, no harm with, no, no, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. It's just that you cannot be called an entrepreneur. But unfortunately, today in the business world, anybody that's doing, that's doing well, whether it's his own idea or whether he's taken the idea from somewhere else, we say he's an entrepreneur. Okay, we say, we say he's an entrepreneur. And why do we say he's an entrepreneur? Because they will say that he has taken a bit of risk. Yeah, he's taken a bit of risk. He has taken a little, a little risk to start a business. So we should give him the title of an entrepreneur. But if you go by the actual definition of an entrepreneur, then he doesn't deserve to be called an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur means there must be some level of newness in the way he does things. Okay, so let's get that clear. But is an entrepreneur a businessman? Is an entrepreneur a businessman? Is an entrepreneur a businessman? Well, if he starts his own business, then he is a businessman. If he's working for an existing organization, then he's an intrapreneur. He's an intrapreneur. But not all businessmen are entrepreneurs. Please get that clear first, okay? Why the sudden interest uh, in, in entrepreneurship? Now, where am I? Okay, let me... 
All right, so there's several definitions, okay? All right, the process by which individuals pursue opportunities without regard to the resources they have. Well, that's one way of looking at it, a very scientific way of looking at it. You may have a very, very good idea. Your idea is fantastic, but you don't have the resources to do it. You don't have the resources to start a business. You might get, uh, RJ is requesting remote control decline. Somebody wants to. Okay, uh, you, might get, uh, you might get someone to invest in your business. Okay, so that's one thing we also cover here in entrepreneurship is you can get others to invest in your business if you have a very good idea. So not necessarily you may have the resources. You may not have the resources at all. Right? You may not have the resources at all to start your business. Aska, Aska are you requesting a remote control? Uh, do you want the, re the do you want the remote do you want the control to the screen aska you want it yeah okay you can uh should i approve it or decline it aska yes uh because you're asking for uh, control over my screen should i you do you want the control over my screen no 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 okay so i've declined it is that okay Yes. Okay. All right. All right. So then there are several definitions. All right. But the one, the second is the best. The art of turning an idea into a business. The art of turning an idea into a business. Now, idea is here. Okay. So one of the things that we have, and everybody, every individual that I that, that that's present here today, and every individual that takes up a course or that's do or, or, or is, is a student. For that matter, even you may not even be a student, but every individual has got a fair amount of creativity. Every individual has got a fair amount of creativity. Okay. And so don't, don't ever tell yourself that I'm not creative. Don't ever tell yourself that I'm not creative. Everybody is creative. Everyone is creative. So creativity is here. All right. Creativity is here. If you do something about your creativity with your hands, then that's called innovation. Okay, so creativity is here. If you do something about your creativity, if you have a very good idea, but you don't do anything about it, let's say you want to, you want to design the first uh, robotic, uh, robotic vacuum cleaner in the world. Okay, you want to come up with a robotic vacuum cleaner. If you have an idea, but you don't do anything about this, it remains as an idea. Okay, but if you start working on it, then it became it becomes innovation. And if you start a business with your innovation, all right, if you start your business with your innovation, that's called entrepreneurship. Okay, I repeat, so it starts here, creativity, doing something about this innovation, right? And then starting a business based on what you have created, that's called entrepreneurship. Okay, so it does not have to be a physical uh, product. It can also be a service. Okay, it can also be a service. Something new, something exciting. All right, and that's what we call the level of newness. It can be something that is 100%. For example, Friendster or Facebook, things that have changed over, over the years, or it can have a certain amount of newness. But I would say at least 5 to 10% of newness. Then you can say you are an entrepreneur. Anything less than 5%, you are more or less like a copycat. Okay, you are a copycat. If you're just going to open a mini market next to a guy who's already doing so well and you follow exactly what he's doing, then you are a businessman, but you're not an entrepreneur. You're more like a copycat. Okay, so creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship. So who are these entrepreneurs? They assemble and they integrate all the resources. Now the resources that we have are four M's. Anybody wants to guess what are the four M's? When you want to start a business, what are the four M's that you need? Anybody wants to guess? What are the four M's that you require? Anyone wants to type out or, or shout out loud? What are the four M's that you require when you start a business? Never mind, guess. Any guesses? Four M's? Four 
What's the most important thing when you want to start a business? What's the first M that you require? We call it vitamin M. Vitamin M. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me or not? Can you guys hear me? I, uh, can you guys hear me? All right, I see something in the chat box. Okay. Uh, yes, you can. Okay, we can hear you. Okay, great. Any guesses? What are the five M's that you require when you want to start a business? What's the first and foremost thing? Money. Yes, thank you, Adi. Thank you, money. After that? Men. Yes, manpower. Thank you, Azka. Thank you. Another two more. What are you staring at right now? Uh, not so much of method. I'm talking about the research, uh, the the men, the 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 material things that you require. Okay, so you have manpower, money. What are you staring at now? What is the screen that you're staring at now? Anybody? What's the screen that you're staring at now? What do you call it? M. Material. Material is good. Correct. Material. One more. Manpower, money, material, and one more M. What are you staring at? Machine. Thank you, Iman. Thank you so much. Yes, machine. So these are the four M's that you require when you start your business. Okay, and sometimes many of these entrepreneurs do not even have these resources. They do not even have these resources. But why? Because they've got a very good business model. All right, they've got a very good strategy uh, that can come under your method. Okay, that can come under your method. They have a wonderful way of doing their business and investors want to invest in them. And investors may want to invest in them. Okay, so sometimes you may not have the resources, but what you have is a fantastic idea. And because your ideas are very good, you get what we call venture capitalists. You get what we call venture capitalists. We'll come to that another time, another day maybe. Venture capitalists are people who, who invest in new businesses. So there are venture, venture capitalists who look for very good business ideas and they will say, you know what? You start your business and I'm with you. Okay, I will, I will pump in all the resources that you require, but you run your business. And why? You want to transform that idea into a business, into a workable business. Okay, so that's, that's where entrepreneurs are. So there's, uh, just before we move on, uh, why do people become entrepreneurs? But before that, I just want to tell you uh, why there's so much of interest in entrepreneurship today. Okay, now when I was a fresh graduate, when I was a fresh graduate 25 years ago, when I was a fresh graduate, even before we, even before we, we uh, graduate, even before we graduate, the banks will come to the campus and come and, uh, come and hunt for us. All right, they will offer us jobs. The banks, banking, especially banking industry, government, uh, also your, your insurance industry, manufacturing, but the main ones were banks. Banks were number one. They will just go out and go and take, okay, we need 200 fresh graduates. We need 150 fresh graduates for this, for this coming few months. So job opportunities were there all the way. But today, banks are not hiring like what they used to hire. And this is because many of these jobs have been replaced by technology. Okay? Many of these jobs have been replaced by technology. So many, many years ago, the universities understood this. They could foresee this problem that, you know what, fresh graduates are going to come out and the job market is not going to be as good as it, as it was 20 years ago or even up to 10 years ago. It is not as good as that. Okay, job, The job market is shrinking. Of course, it also depends on the economy. If the economy improves, then the, there'll be a lot of jobs out there. If the economy does not improve, then there may not be that many jobs out there. So today in many, many universities, in many, many universities, it is kind of compulsory. Uh, it is kind of compulsory for the university to offer at least one course on entrepreneurship. It may not be a bachelor in entrepreneurship, 
but at least one cost in entrepreneurship. And the reason is because we do not know how the job market is going to be when you graduate. That's number one. Number two, what happens is after you have worked for about five or six or seven years, you might get tired. Okay, After working for five or six years, you might get tired of working. You might want to try out your new ideas. You might want to try out uh, new ways of doing things, which your company may not be so receptive. Okay, Your company may not be so receptive. So they will say, uh, you know, uh, we like your idea, but at this moment, we don't have the budget to do it. Or maybe your boss may not like your, your, your way of doing things. So you may have fantastic ideas. You may be bursting with ideas, but nobody's listening. So after maybe five years or six years or seven years of working, you might tell yourself, you know what? I think it's about time I start my own business. Okay, I think I should start my own business. So with that in mind, we have to kind of allow you guys, we kind of like have this entrepreneurship uh, interest taking in right now so that at one point of time, you equip yourself with how to go about starting your own business. Okay, so that's why entrepreneurship is gaining a lot of popularity in uh, around the world in all universities. So today, if you just type in, you'll see Amazon, there are more than 36,000 36, over books on entrepreneurship, 89,000 tit titles on small business ventures, in 1985, only 250 uh, universities were offering courses on entrepreneurship. But today, more than 2,000 courses, 2,000 universities are offering at least one course in entrepreneurship. And the reason is, like I just mentioned, we do not know how the job market is going to be. And also, like I said, five years down the road, you might want to start your own business. So you, it's very important that we equip you with the knowledge and skills required. Okay. So at one time, it was called business as usual, okay? All the big companies, they thought that nobody could touch us. Uh, we will never go down. We are number one in the marketplace. We are number one in the industry. Oh, nobody can touch us. But sorry, I'm so sorry, it doesn't happen anymore nowadays, okay? In fact, large companies are facing what we call shrinking payrolls, where they used to have 50,000 people now they're hiring only 10,000 people. Where they had 10,000 people, they have only 5,000 people. Where they had 800 people, now they're only hiring maybe 300 people because many of these jobs have been replaced with technology, okay? So the large companies are not hiring as many people as they used to. But on the other hand, the smaller companies are hiring more and more people. The smaller companies are hiring more and more people. And what are these small companies? These are the new ventures that are coming out there. So maybe you who's listening to me right now, it can be a student, it can be anybody who's listening to this to me right now. Maybe you could be one guy who's going to start a business in two years time and you, instead of looking for a job, you will be hiring people out there. Okay? But what I'm trying to say, what this slide is actually trying to tell you is that gone were the days where the large organizations used to hire a lot of people. Gone were the days where these companies used to say, Nobody can touch us. We are number one in the industry. We are number one in the world. I'm sorry, okay? There were large companies like Nokia and all, they have all shrunk. Kodak shrunk. IBM reduced in size. AT&T and some of the banks, large banks that used to be so big at one time, today they have actually reduced in size, okay? So the, the, the whole idea today is we have this situation which is called business unusual. Okay, we have the situation called not business as usual, but business unusual, which means that anytime a small organization can come in and wipe you, wipe off your business, a little small organization, which might probably start in your room or which might start in your garage. And within five years, you are actually going to be one of the market leaders. Never, never underestimate your capabilities. Never underestimate your capabilities. You can wipe out some of these large organizations overnight, overnight, okay? And it's happening, and it's happening out there. So the small organizations, which were very small, today they've become giants, they've become giants, okay? So that's what we are in a situation today that's called business unusual. Anything can change anytime. And I like to consider, if, if you want to consider, if you want to have a very good idea of this, I like to consider the big organizations as elephants, which are moving very slow, and the small organizations as cheetahs. 
they are moving very, very fast. Okay, they are moving very, very fast. So the cheetahs and the elephants. Elephants are moving very slow. The large organizations, sometimes they can even fall down and collapse. And the new ones are those, what we call the hyper energetic leopards and cheetahs out there. Very, very energetic. So why do people want to become entrepreneur? Well, these are the three main reasons. And the number one reason is they want to be their own boss. Everybody wants to be their own boss. They don't want to be in a situation where I have to work nine to five. Uh, I have to come in at this time. I have to leave at this time. My boss is scolding me. My boss asked me to do this. I really don't want to do this. I want to do something else. Well, if you really want to do something else, then perhaps it's time for you to start your own business, okay, to become an entrepreneur. And this is actually, this has been found to be the number one reason why people want to become an entrepreneur. They want to do it their way, okay. Uh, there's a nice song that says, I like to do it my way, all right. So they want to do it their way. Second reason, like I said, you may have fantastic ideas. You may have fantastic ideas, but your company is not listening. I repeat, huh? you may have fantastic ideas, but your company is not listening. And sometimes, oh, it's raining now. <laughs> All right. And so, sometimes when they do listen, right? Sometimes when they do listen and they make, let's say, a few million dollars out of your ideas, they might just give you a one month bonus and you get so upset. It was my idea and nobody's giving me my credit. No one is giving me any credit for my idea. And the third reason, and it's number three, huh? it's number three is for the money. Okay, so get it out of your head that people start a business because of money. It's not about the money. Please remember that it is not about the money. People start their businesses because they feel they want to do it their way. Money will come. But if you are starting your business because I can make more money, then you are starting your business for the wrong reason. I repeat, huh? if you are starting a business because you feel that I, I want to make money, I want to be rich very fast, I want to start driving a BMW or a Mercedes, you are starting the business for the wrong reason. You're starting the business for the wrong reason. Money is important. It is important. There's no doubt about that. But you never start a business because it's all about money. Many a times when students are about to graduate, they'll ask me this question, uh, sir, which industry should I go in? I heard the banking industry is very nice. I heard the manufacturing industry is good, can make a lot of money. I always tell them, don't ask which money can make, which industry can make money. What you should be asking is what you like doing. What are you very passionate about? If you are passionate about any work for that matter, the money will come. It's not the other way around. Okay, if you enter some, uh, you enter an industry because of money, you are asking for trouble. So I have students who come and say, oh, my cousin started a, a kindergarten. She started a preschool kindergarten and today she's doing very well. I think I want to do the same thing. I, I, I always ask them, do you like being with children? Do you like taking care of children? Uh, do you like teaching children? Or someone will come and tell me, oh, I think I'll open my own restaurant. You know why? My uncle started a restaurant. Today he's a millionaire. I want to start my own restaurant. Do you love cooking? Right? Do you love cooking? Are you passionate about cooking? If you're not, don't waste your time. Ask yourself, what is it that you're passionate about? Because that's what that's also the first step towards becoming an entrepreneur. Okay, You must be very passionate of what you are doing. So it's not about the money, but yes, money is number three, not number one. So if you're looking at what are the primary characteristics of an entrepreneur, the number one jigsaw puzzle piece that you see there is passion. Okay. People are very passionate. All successful entrepreneurs, they are very passionate about their business. That is why they can stay up until 4 a.m., until 5 a.m. in the morning doing what they're supposed to do. Why? Because they love doing it. So passion is the number one ingredient. Number two is to focus on your customer on a product. That means I have a good idea. I have something that is really, really workable, something that is going to change the world out there, something that is going to change the way people do things. So you are very focused about making people's life better. That is the number two characteristic. Number three characteristics is tenacity. Tenacity simply means you don't give up. 
you never give up because the life of an entrepreneur is never like this. The life of an entrepreneur is up and down. So if you have a very weak heart, don't become an entrepreneur. Okay. If you feel you cannot take the risk, you cannot take the challenge, don't be an entrepreneur because it means your life will be, will have ups and downs. All right. Especially in the first three years, especially in the first three years, when you start your business, the first three years when you start your business, there'll be lots of ups and downs in your life and you cannot give up. Okay, you cannot give up. But nevertheless, if you want to be your own boss, you would probably love it. Because if you have the passion and if you have the focus, then number three is not a problem. Tenacity simply means not giving up. Not giving up. And the last one is execution intelligence. Now, execution intelligence simply means you must have the business fundamentals. Okay, you must have the business fundamentals, which means that you should know how to run a business. So that is why as a business graduate, you will learn HR, you will learn IT, you will learn how to do marketing, you will learn uh, management, you will learn finance, you will learn accounting, you will have to also learn about business law. Now these items you have to learn, these are what we call the basics of your business. If you don't have the basics, it will be difficult for you to run the business. You, you're bound to make mistakes. So sometimes the most creative scientist, he may have designed, let's say, a, a, a robotic car, for example. Okay, He may have designed a robotic car. He's very good, very creative, very passionate, very focused, never give up. But when he starts his own business, he fails. When he starts his own business, he fails. The reason is because he don't, he doesn't have the business fundamentals. I've come across a person uh, who's a very good tailor, very good tailor, the way he sews, very good fashion designer, sorry, fashion designer, very good fashion designer. He was paid a lot of money doing so well. He was passionate. He had the focus. He never gave up. But the problem is when he started his business, he couldn't sustain. And the reason was very simple. He couldn't understand how to run a business, how to market your product, how to apply for license, how to go and uh, uh, talk to customers. He didn't know about all these things. Okay, but he was good in what he was doing. So again, execution intelligence was also very important. These are some notes here, passion for business. Like I mentioned, the number one characteristics. Why, do they, why, are, very, why are they very passionate? Because they have this very strong belief that I can change people's lives. Okay, I have a product that can make people do things faster, easier, better. I have this fried chicken that people are just going to love eating. I have this cake that really tastes out of the world. So you have a very strong belief in your product or service. Okay. And second one, of course, you need to focus. Sometimes you may have a very good product, but customers don't want it. Okay. Customers may not want it. You may think that my, my cake tastes out of the world. People love my cake, but a lot of customers may think they find it very heavy, not, not, not uh, healthy. So you may have to do something about this. So you need to focus, get a balance between what you have and what the customers want. Okay, I repeat, what you have and what the customers want, there has got to be a link between these two. Tenacity simply means uh, you never, never give up. Okay, because setbacks and failures are part of the journey. Okay, you have to be prepared that your life is going to be up and down. So if you, like I said, if you have a very weak heart, please don't, don't take up entrepreneurship. It's not for you. Okay. And why these things happen? Because many a times entrepreneurs are trying something new. And when you are trying something new, the failure rate is much higher. Okay. The failure rate is much, much higher. And so for that reason, uh, you need to be prepared. You need to be prepared that things can go wrong. Okay. Many a times people think that my product is the best product, but when they launch the product out there, they find that the customers are not really interested. So when you learn entrepreneurship, one of the things we teach you is that uh, we teach you how to do feasibility analysis, how to make sure that your product is actually what the customers want. Okay, because the last thing you want is to go into the marketplace and people to find that your product is nothing great, it's nothing to shout about. Okay, and you'll be very, very disappointed. All right. And finally, as I mentioned, your business fundamentals or what we call execution intelligence. You need to have the basic understanding of what is HR, what is IT, what is finance, what is marketing, what is accounting, okay, what is uh, 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 
law, business law, what is employment law, these basic uh, knowledge you should have. And all these four are what are your jigsaw puzzle that leads you to your, um, your successful journey as an entrepreneur. These are some of the common myths. Now, what is a myth? Anybody knows? What is a myth? Have you heard of this word, myth? What is a myth? Anybody wants to try? What is a myth? Have you heard of the word myth? No? Going once? Going to, ah, is there something there in the chat box? Ah, okay. Unfact, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, what I probably, probably what I think you're trying to say is something that you thought was a fact, but actually it's not a fact. Yes, correct. That is a myth. Okay. Something that you, something that you believe that is true, but sometimes it is not true. Like some people say, all blondes are dumb. All blondes are dumb. It's not true. That could be a very intelligent blonde. Okay. All fat people are lazy. Not necessarily this person could be fat, but he's very hardworking. So it's a myth. And these are some of the common myths. Here. So what, a number one myth about entrepreneurs is entrepreneurs are born, not made. Entrepreneurs are born, not made. Now, if this is true, a lot of people will look at their hands and they will see their line and they'll say, okay, can I become an entrepreneur or not? Oh, your entrepreneur line is not there. So you go to the fortune teller, he says, no, 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 you can't be an entrepreneur because there's no entrepreneur line in your finger, in your on your hands. Okay, so you don't be an entrepreneur. And then maybe you look at uh, Mark Zuckerberg, you say, oh, there's a very strong entrepreneur line in, on, his, on his palm. It's not true, okay? Anybody, take it from me today, ladies and gentlemen, anybody, uh, anybody for that matter, anybody can be an entrepreneur. Anybody, it can be a male, it can be a female, you can come from a very, 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 very rich family or you can come from a very, very, very uh, poor family, okay? You can be able-bodied, you can be a special, a, special, uh, a special child for that matter. Anybody can be an entrepreneur. There is no such thing as people are born to be entrepreneurs, not necessary. Because if it is true, if it is true, then there's no use teaching entrepreneurship. Uh, if it is true, then there's no use. I'm coming here and talking to you about entrepreneurship. Okay, so nobody is born to be an entrepreneur. Whether you want to become a not, it is up to you. Okay, whether you want to become an entrepreneur or not, is up to you. But to become one, it's a function of your environment. It depends on your environment. If you come from a family that's very, very supportive, then it's better for you. Sometimes people become an entrepreneur because they have seen too much of poverty in the house. And he says, I want to be an entrepreneur to change my life. Okay. Or it can be your life experience. Maybe you have an uncle who's a, a very successful entrepreneur and you look up to him like a role model and you say, I want to be like my uncle. So that's your life experience. And of course, it can also be your personal choice. You tell yourself, I want to start my own business. I want to chart my own destiny. I don't want to work nine to five. I don't want to do things. I don't want somebody to come and tell me what to do. I want to do it my way. So it is entirely up to you. Okay. It is entirely up to you. Whether you become successful or not, that's another story. All right. So that is why we tell, I usually tell my students, not learning entrepreneurship will reduce your learning curve. Sorry, I should put it the other way around. Not learning entrepreneurship will increase your learning curve. And learning entrepreneurship will reduce your learning curve. So you won't make the mistakes that others have done. So you learn from these mistakes. You learn from these mistakes and say, oh, this is not how it's supposed to be done. So then maybe your success rate will be much higher. Okay, so get it out of your mind that you have to be born to be an entrepreneur. Nevertheless, whether you're born to be an entrepreneur or not, these are some of the common traits that you will find among entrepreneurs. Among very successful entrepreneurs, these are some of the common traits. Now, they like to take moderate risk. They are not gamblers. They like to take moderate risk. They're very persuasive. When you talk to an entrepreneur, he's always trying to persuade you. All right. Oh, you should buy this product. Oh, this will change the way you do things. 
Okay, so they promote their product. They can assemble resource. They can get all the four M's from somewhere and they can start their business. They are very creative. They are self-starters. Self-starters means they don't wait for others to tell them. They will do it themselves. Tenacious, as I mentioned earlier, they don't give up. Tolerant of ambiguity. They are, they are ready to face the world tomorrow. There's no such thing as, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to close my business and run away. No. You know, they are ready to face the world. Whatever happens, we will face it. Visionary, they look into the future, what the future is going to look like. So they have a very, very, uh, very long-term view of their business. Very optimistic. They are, very, they are not negative. They are always positive. They should wake up with springs on their feet. Wake up in the morning and they're always happy to start the day. Not somebody that feels, oh, yo, today is another working day. Today is so boring. I hate my life. You can't be a person like that. Uh, and a, a very uh, successful entrepreneur is someone that wakes up in the morning and he's so happy that today is another day and today is, I'm going to reach out to more people. He's a networker. He mixes around with a lot of people. He's achievement motivated. He's always trying to achieve something. Alert to opportunities. They're always looking out for opportunities. They always have this antenna and they're looking out for opportunities. So everywhere they go, they open their eyes. They open their eyes and they look, what are people doing? What are people using nowadays? What are the latest trends? Especially when they travel overseas, what are the things that people are doing in this country that I can bring back to my country? What I have in my country that I can bring to this country? So there are a lot of opportunities that they are looking up. They are very confident. They are decisive. Decisive means once they make up their mind, they will do it. They are energetic because they love doing it. So they are energetic. They, are, they have a strong work ethic. Now, what they mean by work ethic here means you find that many entrepreneurs are very highly respectable. Many entrepreneurs are very highly respectable. They are not cheaters. Just to make money, they go and cheat people. They won't do that. All right? When they promise something to their customers, they will deliver. Of course, they have to make money, but they don't cheat. They don't short change. They don't tell you, I will give you A, B, C, D, E, and they only give you A, B, C. They must give you A, B, C, D, E. Whatever they promise, they deliver. And finally, they have a lengthy attention span. They can spend a lot of time studying something that they, uh, they don't get distracted easily. They're very interested in something. They don't get distracted easily. Okay. So these are some very common uh, characteristics. Now, I would want you, uh, as students, I would want you to go back and relook where, uh, where do you stand among these characteristics? Where do you stand? especially when you're working on an idea or especially when you're working on a business, where do you stand? What is it that you like? So you must have at least 50% of these characteristics. At least 50% of these characteristics. Oh, something in the chat box. Uh, presency. What is presency? I don't understand. What is presency? Anybody? What is presency? Enic? Novita? What is presency? Um, go ahead. Sorry, it's okay. Uh, presency is just a link for absence for students. Oh, okay, okay. okay. You can go oh, oh. for your presentation. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. So I thought there was a question there. My bad. All right. Number two, entrepreneurs are not gamblers. They are not stupid people. Please remember that entrepreneurs are not stupid people. They will not, if they have 100,000 US dollars in their account, they're not going to take all that 100,000 and start their business. They will never do that because if you do that, you'll be worried about money. You'll be worried, oh, I've got no more money left. I put everything in my business. They don't do that. They don't do that, okay? They are what we call moderate risk takers. Okay, why people say they are risk takers? It's because they think, right? Uh, it's because uh, why, 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 why do people say they are risk takers? It's because sometimes they might just resign from their high flying job. They might just resign from their high flying job and go and start a new business. So a lot of people will think that, wow, you're taking such a big risk. You were earning so much of money. Why did you resign suddenly? What's wrong with you? But he's got, he has done his calculation. He has done his homework. And he knows this idea will work. Okay? So there's no such thing as they, they, they're dumping everything overnight, resigning without thinking, and then, oh, I'm going to start my business tomorrow. 
they don't do that. They definitely don't do that. Okay, so they are not gamblers. They are not gamblers. They do take risk, but it's a calculated risk. Why do people think they are gamblers? Is because their jobs are not structured. They might be working when you are sleeping. When others are sleeping, they could be working. Okay. Another reason is also because they've got challenging goals. They say, I want to achieve this in the next one year. And many a times people will think something is wrong with him. How could he, how can he even have such goals? It's crazy. I want to, uh, for example, I, like I mentioned earlier, I want to, I want to uh, produce the first uh, robotic vacuum cleaner in the world. And people think you, something is wrong with him. How, how can you do this will not work. If everybody starts thinking like that, we will not have an aeroplane today. We will not be having contact lenses. We will not be having computers today. We will not be having handphones today because everybody came up with these ideas. They took some amount of risk. They would have probably given up their full-time jobs and really spent hours and hours designing these products. So they do take risk, but they are not crazy gamblers. Entrepreneurs are motivated by money. Of course not. Okay, Money is very, very important, but nobody starts a business because of money. Okay, please remember that. All right. Nobody starts a business because of money. Okay? So entrepreneurs are motivated by money. Yes, they are motivated by, they are, sorry, sorry. Money is important, but they are not motivated by money. Nobody starts a business because thinking that I can make lots of money. Nobody does that. Okay. But when you come up with something new, when you come up with something exciting, people will buy your products. And you know what will happen? Money will chase you. You don't have to chase for money, but money will chase you. Can I repeat that? You don't chase for money, money will chase you. Okay, so there are a lot of successful entrepreneurs there. People are waiting to buy their products. Okay, their people are waiting to buy their products. And the reason is because they've got a very good product. So they don't think of the money. Money will come. Definitely money will come. All right, and this is another myth about entrepreneurs. Uh, entrepreneurs should be young and energetic. Now, I just want to tell you, even a 60-year-old, 70-year-old guy can become an entrepreneur. Even a 10, even a 12-year-old or 15-year-old boy can become an entrepreneur. So entrepreneur can be of any age. There is no fixed age. But what makes you look strong in the eyes of an investor is if you've got maturity, some level of experience. So usually when students graduate and they say, should I start my business right away? And I always tell them, go and work for at least three years. Go and work in an industry for at least two to three years understand what that industry is all about and then you decide to open your business don't simply open a business immediately okay but i must tell you there are people as young as 14 years old 15 years old they are starting their own businesses ceo okay so it's it's any age okay it's any age if you are very determined you're very energetic then go ahead and start but if you're not sure and you're still not very clear about how the industry works then at least get some amount of experience, some amount of maturity, how to handle stress, for example, okay? Uh, and then if you work in an environment, you build your reputation, people must come to know who you are, then it's easier for them to trust your business, okay? So all that comes with experience. And finally, a lot of people think that entrepreneurs want the spotlight. They all like to think, wow, you know, entrepreneurs means you have to be an extrovert, you must be out there making speeches, talking on in the media, going on Facebook, going on uh, news channels, and you're there. No. All right. There are a few that love to do. They love the spotlight. But there are many, many more who do not want any public attention. They like to live in a very quiet and a very secluded life. They don't want or what we call as uh, low profile. They keep a very, very low profile. Okay, why do people think like that? Because you will know Jeff Bezos, you will know Mark Zuckerberg, you will know Steve Jobs. But do you know who are, who's the person behind Twitter? Do you know who's the person behind YouTube, Netflix, and so on? Perhaps you don't. So not all entrepreneurs like to be uh, at the forefront. Many of them would like to work behind the scenes and just do their work. Okay, so this is also another myth about entrepreneurs. In fact, you can be a very introvert person and still be a very successful entrepreneur. Okay, like I say, it's entirely up to you what kind of business that you are into.
All right, these are the three types of startup firms. One is called a salary substitute firm. Some, some people, they want to start their own business. They will just look at uh, what can give me the same amount of salary that I have. Let's say if I'm earning 5,000 US dollars a month, I will start a business that can also give me 5,000 US dollars a month. And I'll say, okay, I'm very happy. All right, now these guys are not entrepreneurs. These guys are not entrepreneurs. They are just starting a business for the sake of starting a business. Then you have a second group of people which are also not very entrepreneurial, but okay. Uh, these are what you call lifestyle firms, okay? Maybe you like to play golf, all right? Maybe you like to play golf, so you become a golf instructor. You start a company of a golf instructor. Maybe you love to swim, so you start your own swimming school. You love to dance, so you start your own dancing studio. You love to work out in the gym, so you start your little gym or you become a fitness trainer. Now, these are what we call lifestyle firms. So you do, of course, you do enjoy what you're doing, but you're not entrepreneur. You're not bringing in new ideas. But if you look at entrepreneurial companies, they are the ones that start businesses because they've got a new product or service in mind. And they will start their business regardless whether they have the four M's that we spoke about. Right? Whether I've got the four M's that I spoke about earlier, it doesn't matter, but I've got a fantastic idea and I want to start my business. So those are what we call entrepreneurial firms. Okay. These are some of the changing demographics. One up for the women, more and more women are becoming entrepreneurs. And in fact, uh, there are some studies that have shown women are better entrepreneurs than men. Women are better entrepreneurs entrepreneurs than men, okay? They do a better job than men. But the good thing is more and more women are becoming entrepreneurs. And the reason is because many a times, some women do face a bit of discrimination in the workplace, especially when they have children or especially if they are married and they find that they, they, uh, if, there's a, if there's an opening for a promotion, they tend to be bypassed for it. They'll probably give it to a guy who is more, uh, more, more mobile. Okay, for example, if you're opening a new branch from Jakarta, you're opening a new branch in Bandung, for example. Okay, you will probably give that promotion to a guy and not to a lady because you will say, oh, she's married, she's got children. I don't think she'd be able to do a good job. Okay, so women do face discrimination in the workplace. So that's why more and more women are becoming entrepreneurs. Minority entrepreneurs, which means simply means that in a country where you are the minority you would probably become an entrepreneur because you don't get that many job opportunities. I repeat, okay, especially in the case, in the example, in the case of United States, you find many Asians who have gone to US, they probably have more businesses out there running their own businesses is because they probably cannot get jobs in the mainstream. If they want to become a policeman, they'll become a teacher, it becomes a bit more difficult for them. So minorities tend to uh, go into, entre uh, become entrepreneurs. And more and more old people are becoming entrepreneurs. More and more old people, 50 years and above, are becoming entrepreneurs. It's because today the lifespan has increased tremendously. Okay, The lifespan has increased tremendously. And the retirement age of 55 is not applicable anymore. Okay, So if this guy is going to live until 85, he would probably want to start a business and do something for the next 30 years. Okay, So uh, in the America, they found in 2015, about 30% of the businesses were started by people 50 years and above, okay? And of course, one of their main concerns is because uh, the rising cost of medical, medical cost, um, uh, cost of living, and they do not know how long these guys are gonna be around. So more and more old people are also becoming entrepreneurs. And uh, as long as the re uh, retirement age is increased, many of them will probably stay on working. But the entire retirement age stays at say 55 or 56, in Malaysia now, we are trying to increase it to 60. Uh, in some places, it's 58. I don't know how it is in Indonesia. What is your retirement age? But if the retirement age goes down, definitely more people will start businesses. And if the retirement age goes up, less old people will start their own businesses. And one of the beautiful things about them starting their businesses is they've got many years of experience. They can carry that many, many years of experience to their, uh, to their businesses especially their contacts also. Okay, so they've got fantastic uh, connections and networks. Like I said, many, many young people are also becoming entrepreneurs. Uh, kids as young as uh, grade five to grade 12, that means about six years old to 12 years old, 
they are already thinking about how to start their own business. Four in 10 kids are already thinking that they, that they want to start their own business. And one of the reasons is because they are motivated by their parents or guardians. Okay, So if they've got their uncle or their parents or grandfather or grandmother who's running a business, uh, they also feel that they want to do the same thing. Okay, So young, old, women, anybody can become an entrepreneur. Why, why, are entrepreneur, uh, why are entrepreneur firms very, very important? Because many a times, the new product that you're using, the new service that you're using, the Grab, the, the what is that? Uh, Gojak, Gojak, in Indonesia, you have Gojak, okay? All this, most of these products are being formed by small companies. Many a times, especially your mobile apps, they are being developed by very, very young entrepreneurs. Okay, so the process of creating something new comes from these entrepreneurial companies. And then the study has also found that small companies are 16 times more productive than larger companies. Because larger companies, it is what we call business as usual. We are number one, we are the best, nobody can touch us. But small companies are the ones that are very, very energetic, very, very energetic to start their own business. What other impact they have? All the small businesses today are actually creating more jobs. So that's why the government of many, many countries, and I would say even Indonesia for that matter, they do encourage entrepreneurship. The reason is because the government will encourage you to start new businesses so that in the future, you can employ more people. Okay, so the whole idea of giving you this encouragement, giving you the funds, giving you the infrastructure for you to start your own business is because they want you to start creating jobs in the future. So if you have a very good idea, don't worry, snap it up, go and get it, go and get the funding. Uh, the government will be very, more than happy to provide you with the funding, okay? Uh, so that's where government comes in to encourage entrepreneurship. Uh, I believe this is my last slide, okay? So what's the impact of entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship? Well, they have, they have brought about a dramatic impact. Most of the products and services that you see today, most of the, the, the services that you use today, they have mainly been brought by uh, smaller companies, by all these entrepreneurial companies. They make our life easier. They make us more productive. They entertain us. All the mobile games that you use today, all the mobile apps that you're using today, uh, even they improve our health. All right, we have mobile apps called fitness. Uh, many, many products and services that you're using today, they have actually come about by all these entrepreneurial companies. Okay, so it's made our life wonderful, right? It's made our life wonderful. And, and, what, and, and what support do they provide to larger companies? More and more larger companies are outsourcing. More and more larger companies are outsourcing many of these areas to smaller companies. For example, they say, okay, HR, out, outsource, IT operations, outsource, call center, outsource. So many of these smaller entrepreneurial companies are supporting the larger companies. Many of these smaller companies are supporting the larger companies and the larger companies can become more efficient by focusing on what we call your core competence. So the banks can focus on banking. They don't have to worry about IT. The banks can focus on, their, on building their customer base. They don't have to worry about their call centers. They don't have to worry about uh, hiring people, HR. Many, many of these things have been outsourced to smaller companies. Okay, so that's where the small companies come. So in short, there are lots and lots and lots of opportunities out there for you to tap on. Okay, there are lots and lots of opportunities out there for you to tap on. Whether you want to take it or not, it is entirely up to you. You want to be your own boss, go ahead. There are opportunities out there. Many a times people will say, there are already so many companies out there. What do I do? Let me tell you one thing. When you join an industry later on, or when you work for, let's say, one or two years, you will find what we call gaps. You will find gaps. That means there is a market and nobody is supplying it. There's a market for a certain product and nobody is supplying it. So that's a gap. So you can actually fill in that gap. All right, as an entrepreneur, you can actually fill in those gaps. So the opportunities are in abundance. The opportunities are in abundance. Do you want to be your own boss or not? It's entirely up to you. Ladies and gentlemen, 
this marks the end of the little session that I've created for you guys today. I'd like to open the session for any questions that you may have. You can feel free to speak up or you can uh, write it in the chat box. Uh, all right, somebody has already written there. Untuk audience, jika ada yang ingin ditanyakan, bisa raise hand atau menulis di kolom chat. So my Indonesian language is quite good. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, any questions? Yeah, I maybe for for waiting, I will share a question from YouTube in a room chat. I'm ready not all of audience. Yeah, this moment. All right. So. This is from all right, there's a question here. I have passion to make a dessert. Many people say to me, my cooking is delicious. And I hope many people can taste it. May I know first step, what do I do? Because I worry that the ingredients that can be stored for a long time and it can make a loss. So I'm thinking about opening a dessert cafe. Okay, that's very nice. All right. Uh, I would think... I would think that before you open a cafe immediately, all right, uh, it, it, before you open a cafe, why don't you start a small catering business first? Okay, uh, so that one way you do not invest too much on a cafe. Number two, start online, all right? You can start online. So you can say my, my desserts, let's say ice cream, all right? Or my cakes are fantastic. You can, and you can start, you can call them, what is your name? Novita, Novita, you want to start. Okay, great. So you can call them Novita's Cakes. Okay, Novita's Cakes. You can say, uh, do, become a part-time entrepreneur. Uh, in fact, I do recommend people to become a part-time entrepreneur. So um, Monday to Friday, you, uh, you dedicate your life. Of course, I hope your boss is not hearing this. Okay, Monday to Friday, you can dedicate your life to your work. But after you come back from work or during your weekends or during holidays, you can dedicate to your business. And one day you find that the business is doing very well. My orders are already coming up to here. I cannot take care. Then maybe it's about time for you to quit your job and start uh, uh, your own business. Okay. So I would say start uh, catering services, spread the word around, let them know. And then as you're selling your product, people will come and tell you, Novita, I like your cakes, but you know what? I think it's a bit too sweet. All right. Or oh, Novita, I, I like your uh, uh, chicken sandwich, but, uh, you know, it's a bit too salty. So you actually get a lot of feedback. Okay. You get a lot of feedback. And I hope your boss is not hearing this. Okay. Can students start a business by selling online first or start it face to face? In today's time, I would say start online. Start online. You know why? Uh, the startup cost is very minimal. Okay. The startup cost is very minimal. Uh, don't, don't, and, and, and if you, if you, I, I don't know about Indonesia, but in Malaysia, if you walk around and see many of these uh, physical outlets are closing down. Okay. Because today everybody is busy buying online. So I would suggest start online until a time comes when you find that uh, I have reached a certain point where I can go out on my own and I'm ready to take on, I've already got 1,000 or 10,000 customers, loyal customers, then maybe you can go face to face. You explained about 5M. I said 4M, not 5M. Okay. May I know the detailed meaning of machine and some examples, sir? Thank you. Okay. Your first M, your first M, money. You know money, right? Your second M, manpower, staff, employees. Your third M is material. Now, material means, uh, for example, if I'm starting, a, like if you're starting a cafe, you need to have materials. You need to have sugar. You need to have uh, 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 salt, pepper. Uh, you need to buy packaging, boxes. You need to buy uh, your day-to-day -day use. Those are materials. Now, what do you mean by machine? Is Again, if you're going to a cafe, you need to buy your oven. You need to buy your uh, toasters. You need to buy an electric, electric cooker, for example. So those are machines. You're opening a factory tomorrow. You need to have a cutter. You need to buy those various machines that you need. Uh, if you're going to open a call center, for example, 
then you need to buy computers. So those are machines. So machine, material, manpower, money. Of course, money can buy all the other three. Right? Money can actually get all the other three. Okay? But you have to be careful. Sometimes manpower can be an issue. Okay? For example, in Malaysia, we want to open a factory. Sometimes we cannot get workers. So manpower becomes an issue. Becomes an issue. So think of all these factors before you open. This is question from audience in live YouTube. Okay, all right. All right. So it's not, so you are not opening the uh, cafe, Novita? Pardon, sir? You are not the one that's opening the cafe. Opening? The cafe, the dessert. Yeah, actually, this is question from me. From the student. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. All right. All right. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Any other questions? Feel free to ask me. Uh, maybe for our audience. Okay. I think we don't have no more question again, sir. Yeah. Oh. I will continue this uh, session to closing. Is it okay? Maybe before I close this session today, you will say before. Okay, uh, so there are no questions, then uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Stay Calm. Uh, greetings from Health University. Uh, if you have any issues, any questions that you want to ask me, maybe you're shy to ask me, then perhaps I will leave my uh, uh, email address with the, with the, with the coordinator, uh, with the coordinator, and then you can always get back to me on that. Okay, so on that note, take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you for Dr. Kisan to share your sharing your knowledge is a uh, very beneficial for our audience. Yeah, maybe it can uh, we take a picture for documentation, sir. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Maybe say just a moment, please. Do you want me to close? You want me to stop sharing this? Yeah, you can stop your clip. In just a moment, please. I will say one, two, three. Yeah, thank you for coming. Yeah, is it enough? Yeah, thank you for Dr. Kisen to sharing your knowledge. Thank you, and I hope we can see again in other event in the future. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you. See you soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.